The award for best European actor goes to Rocco Cifredi! Netflix continues to thrive in its biopic category, and after a series of infamous mob bosses and shows based on their lives, now is the turn of one of the world's most famous adult film stars, Rocco Sifredi. The latest Netflix series, Super Sex, dives deep into his journey and captures his relationships, state of mind, and internal conflicts that made him who he is. However, not everything is an accurate portrayal of reality, and even the actor admitted that many fictional elements were added to the narrative to make things appealing for the viewers. In this video, we will explore some of the major differences between Rocco Sifredi in real life and what is shown in the series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Rocco Sifredi was not intimate with a woman in front of the media. One of the most shocking moments in this Netflix biopic comes in the very first episode. Super Sex opens at a sex convention in Parigi in 2004, where the journalists and other guests are left stunned when Rocco Sifredi announces his retirement. It is established that acting in adult movies is more than just a job for money for the actor, and the show then takes you on repeated flashbacks to get under the skin of the character and know him better. However, the episode also has an unexpected moment after Rocco announces his retirement. An ambitious adult film actress meets him following his announcement and suggests that it was her dream to star in a movie alongside him. Rocco obliges her request in a rather strange manner and becomes physically intimate with her right there before everyone present. It is a bizarre scene to say the least, as Rocco goes about his business with the woman and everyone is cheering in the background because it's seems like his retirement announcement could have been a publicity stunt. Of course, the story soon cuts to his struggles with hallucinations of his dead brother and other existential crisis that bothers him. However, we are unable to get over this bizarre moment, which makes us look up further on this matter. There is no mention of such a stunt by Rocco Sifredi, and his retirement announcement was rather uneventful. In fact, he did not rejoin the industry for a good many years before making a comeback. Surely, he did not make love to a woman in front of all the journalists and guests at the event. And this is a fictional addition to make the storytelling catchy. Hey, little man. Tommaso, Rocco's half-brother story arc in Super Sex, is more fiction than facts. If you watch the recently released Netflix series, you will realize that Rocco's elder half-brother Tommaso has been given an unusual amount of importance in the narrative. Tommaso, aka Tommy, adores his younger brother and is extremely protective of him, and he even plays a major role in influencing his little brother. The relationship, however, gets strained with time, but even in the final episode of the show, it is suggested that the brothers can still count on each other. But did a character like Tommy really exist in Rocco Sifredi's real life? Rocco did have an elder brother who helped and supported him quite a bit during his struggling period. However, all the extra drama and details around Tommy in the series is entirely fictional in all likelihood. The actor has never divulged into the details about his family to respect their privacy. But he did admit how his elder brother played a key role in bringing him to the position that he earned over the years. This elderly guiding figure did not just judge him for his choices and supported his dreams, and it is not surprising that a biopic series uses such a character in great detail. It is just good to remember that the version of Tommy that you see in the series is actually a heavily fictionalized version of Rocco's real-life elder brother who lent him a helping hand. But above all, he had Lucia. Lucia's story arc is completely made up in the series. The Netflix series goes to great lengths in order to come up with possible explanations behind the events that shaped Rocco Sifredi and his career in the adult film industry. Of course, a major part of the influence working behind him was that of his elder brother Tommy, but what cannot be ignored in the narrative is the impact that Tommy's wife Lucia had on Rocco. It is shown that young Rocco fantasized about Lucia in a way, and as a little boy, he would idolize his elder brother 
for having her as his girlfriend. Even though his mother was opposed to this relationship because of Lucia's reputation of being promiscuous, Rocco had nothing short of admiration for this young lady. As he grew up and made his way to France, he encountered Lucia yet again while living with his brother. There are several moments in the show that suggest Rocco's soft corner for Lucia and some complicated feelings between the two of them. Even though nothing really happens between them, these complex attachments for each other impact both their lives. But did such a character really exist? Well, it is an open secret that Lucia is an entirely made-up character, and there was no such woman in Rocco's life. In fact, the character has been carefully crafted in a way that it takes into account a lot of women who had influenced Rocco in some way. You could call Lucia's character a combination of many relationships that Rocco had indulged in, and her presence simply adds to the dramatic effect on the life of the Italian stallion. It also further complicates his relationship with his elder brother, which may or may not have been the case in real life. Like all superheroes, it was the superpower that came to me when I was feeling the most pain. Did Super Sex Magazine really play a key role in Rocco's life? In the very first episode, a flashback scene to his childhood shows that a young Rocco stumbles upon an adult magazine named Super Sex, where he finds an intriguing story about a superhero whose superpower is pleasuring women. It is suggested that this magazine and the particular superhero influences Rocco quite a bit as the young boy is captivated by the idea of being like this superhero. It may be a nice way to set up the character in a rather dramatic fashion, but the influence bit seems to have been exaggerated quite a bit. Rocco Sofredi was influenced by his brother, is what most interviews and the previous documentary on the adult film star suggests. Also, it is quite doubtful if he was inclined to the adult industry at such an early age as shown in the series. Of course, he may have come across an adult magazine as a kid, but the attempt to oversell its impact on his life doesn't seem too believable in these circumstances. In fact, his half-brother Tommy's repeated advice to become rich in order to deal with their family troubles was a far greater motivating factor for Rocco in choosing his career path. The series doesn't explore how Rocco briefly took a break from porn to be a fashion model. For a show that constantly tries to make an effort so that the audience would sympathize with the adult film star, the narrative often cuts to the point where we see the vulnerable moments of the Italian stallion. He struggles with his childhood life, and later, he struggles to come to terms with his complicated and toxic relationship with his half-brother Tommy. Unfortunately, the show fails to take into account a crucial moment in Rocco's life, where he gave up acting in the porn industry during the late 1980s. He had already made a name for himself in the adult film world, but Rocco wanted to take a break from the harsh demands of the industry. He worked as a fashion model, and it is believed that he met his wife during this phase of his life. His wife, Rosa Caracciolo, was a Hungarian model, and she has been a constant source of support for the adult film star. However, he made a comeback shortly, and this time around, Rocco Sifredi actually became the popular face that we know the Italian stallion for. He carved a niche for himself with his particular genre of specific sexual acts where rough intimacy became a major part of his movies. I know that when you're looking for something in life, you always have to go back to where you came from. Rocco did not become a part of the adult film industry by accident. Super sex would lead you to think that Rocco Sifredi almost became a part of some carefully orchestrated events that pushed him into the adult film industry. The reality, however, is slightly different, and the actor has admitted that he has harbored a dream of starring in adult films when he was only 13 years old. He conveyed his ambitions to his elder brother, who initially dismissed his plans, thinking them to be fantasies of a boy who just reached puberty but Rocco held on to these dreams, and by the time he was 20, he headed to France. He was indeed sheltered by his brother and even introduced to the right people who propelled his rise in the industry. There was no looking back for Rocco once he tasted success, and his career flourished from this point. The show explores a lot of drama and lucky accidents that put Rocco before the right people at the right time, but that was certainly not the case. He did frequent the sex clubs in Paris, and he did gain a reputation for his performances there, but this simply may have helped him grab the attention of the relevant people who crafted his stardom in a few years.
Is Super Sex a lopsided and twisted portrait of Rocco Sifredi? What about the complaints and criticisms against him? Biopics have often been known for shielding the character in many ways, and Super Sex is not an exception. The narrative is so busy to convince the viewers about the plight of Rocco Sifredi and his struggles beyond the glory of his illustrious career that it almost skips on the more unpleasant aspects of the actor. The actor was known for his infamous style of rough sex, which involved everything from choking to slapping slapping, and an animalistic behavior that stamped dominance on the scene. He always defended any form of violence in his sexual acts as something that he called pain with pleasure, but it did not help his cause that some of those who acted alongside him later complained about Rocco in podcasts and interviews. He developed a reputation of breaking women and pushing them to their sexual limits, and some actresses did not want to work with him because of this reputation. Of course, Rocco has always claimed that consent is of utmost importance to him, but the controversies around him did not die down simply because of such claims. Again, he came under a lot of criticism in 2017 for defending James Dean, another adult film star who faced several rape allegations. James Dean reportedly idolized Rocco Sifredi, and the latter came out in support of James Dean and tried to defend him from the allegations. This brought him under a lot of flack on the social media, with with people demanding to know if he sympathized with someone facing such serious charges. The Netflix series does precious little to highlight these unpleasant aspects of his life, and the viewers would have loved to see a more unbiased portrayal of the character. Rocco Sifredi did not permanently retire back in 2004. The demands of the adult film industry can take a physical and mental toll on an individual, and Rocco Sifredi wasn't spared from the harsh conditions. The show suggests that Rocco Sifredi retires from the active participation in porn films and moves on to take up the role of a producer and director. The series ends with a scene that suggests that the Italian stallion is seeking treatment for his condition as the actor submits samples to a clinic. However, the show fails to explore the part where Rocco Rocco Sifredi makes a comeback after a few years. The previous documentary on the actor and many of his candid interviews have revealed that Rocco was struggling with sex addiction after quitting the industry. It went to the extent where he would disappear from home for days to indulge in sexual escapades with anyone from seniors to trans women and even men. He recounted his ordeal later and stated how his wife supported him through this phase and told him that being a part of the adult film industry was completely his decision. He returned to perform on screen in adult films in the year 2009, and his career continued for six more years before he took another step back in 2015 for the sake of his marriage and family. The actor has spoken openly about his sex addiction and even opened up on how he dealt with this terrible situation. We are not trying to find any noble purpose of Rocco, and we are not here to judge him either, but a biopic based on his life should have taken into account such events with a greater detail. Marvelous Verdict, a cliched biopic that exaggerates events and sidelines controversies. Rocco Sifredi, the Italian sensation in the porn industry, is not a flawless man, and the series does not try to portray him as the innocent victim of circumstances. However, where the narrative goes overboard is an attempt to focus too hard on his mental struggles and almost victimizes the actor to a point. His toxic relationships are given a lot more attention than his real ones, and the hallucinations Hallucinatory moments are a bit much, and you might be forgiven for thinking at times that you are in for a Bob Marley documentary of sorts. But the show does have its positives, and it is nice to see the makers shed the taboo around the industry and examine the family dynamics and personal life of an actor from the adult film world. Overall, Super Sex may not be the perfect biopic, but it is certainly worth a watch for some remarkable performances especially from Alessandro Borghi, who plays Rocco. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the series, and also tell us if you feel that the show somehow glorifies the adult film star and undermines the controversies surrounding him. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.